this video is on six types of research gap with examples of each my name is Vincent Asogwa let me begin this way what is research gap you bear with me that any study that does not have research gap is not worthy to be conducted because at the end you will not find any contribution to the field of knowledge now let me define it this way a research gap is an area of interest that has not been explored in previous literature on the subject it is an unresolved problem in a field which reflects a lack of existing research in that area. Research gap is very important, as I have said, because it helps to identify the area that needs further investigation and to contribute to the advancement of knowledge in a field. So finding a suitable research gap is essential in developing a unique and original research title for your dissertation, thesis, or research project. It is worthy to note that the research gap is different from statement of the problem. Statement of problem is broader than a research gap, but no study can be conducted without a research gap. It is possible to have a study without a research a statement of problem, only with a research gap. A research gap is an aspect of a research problem, but the center or the focus of a research problem. So research statement of problem is broader than a research gap. In this presentation, we will look at the six types of research gap and we also try to show some tips at which you you will take to identify your research gap now the six types of research gap one is classic literature gap some will call it literature gap two is disagreement gap three is contextual gap four is methodological gap five is time gap and six is population gap the classic literature gap sometimes is called a typical literature gap or a standard literature gap this emerges when there is a new concept or phenomenon that has not been studied much or at all in that case there is little known or limited studies on that topic it could be geographical location it could be on a particular subject it could be on a specific aspect of the topic for example something like precision agriculture drone technology or gamification in education Example of classic literature is when a social media platform is launched. There is an opportunity to explore its impact on users, how it could be leveraged for marketing, its impact on the society, and so on. You know, when you launch a social media, you cannot conduct the impact of such social media until after some time. So, that after sometimes is classic because no one has done it there's no information on that there's no study on that the advantage is that classic literature gap can present existing research opportunities but the drawback is that you will have to draw on adjacent literature to build your literature review because there will not be much literature 
in that area that is directly related to that topic. What do we mean by adjacent? Supposing you want to find out the effect of gamification in agricultural education. And there is none who has conducted study in that area. So you may have be tempted to go to a chemistry or physics where someone has conducted a study on uh, effect of gamification on students learning in chemistry. Two is disadvantage gap, Disad disagreement gap, sorry. Two is disagreement gap. A disagreement gap exists when there is already a failed deal of existing research. But where the findings of the studies pool is different, pull in different directions, making it def difficult to draw firm conclusion. What does that mean? When there is presence of controversy, confusion, or misunderstanding on the topic. If you have any contradiction in findings giving rise to lack of clarity or understanding, that means that there is a disagreement gap. Example is, you are research, when your research aims to identify the cause and or causes of a particular disease, upon reviewing literature, you may find that there is a body of research that points towards cigarette smoking as a key factor of that disease. But you also, at some time, you also find another large body of literature that points at no link between smoking and that disease. In that case, you have a disagreement gap, which you need to go into study to find out the correct stand to make an informed decision and contribute to the body of knowledge for clarity. The advantage is that the disagreement gap can offer interesting research challenges. But a drawback is that you will have to critically review and compare the existing studies and justify why your approach or perspective is different from the former studies that have been conducted in that area. The contextual gap. A contextual gap arises when there is existing research on a topic, but it has not been applied or tested in a specific context or setting. I mentioned something about uh, adjacent study. This is what we are talking about, the context. When there is a limitation or limited application of existing research on other areas or related field other than where the research or the literature exists. If you have a literature on a precision of agriculture or challenges of precision agriculture in Nigeria, then you don't have such study in Eswatini. Sometimes some people call it a, a, a geographical uh, uh, gap. Another example is when you have a study on a particular area, on a particular subject. Take, for instance, the effect of artificial intelligence in medicine then no one has done the effect of artificial intelligence in agriculture or in engineering or in geography. That is what we call contextual gap. What it means is that within the existing research regarding factors affecting job, like for, for instance satisfaction, there may be a wealth of established or agreed upon empirical work within a particular location let's say US and UK context, but very little research within Eastern nations, such as Japan, Korea, or even Africa. In that case, is a contextual gap. The benefit is that it can provide valuable research contributions to a particular setting or a particular context, 
but the disadvantage is that you or the challenge so far is that you will have to demonstrate why the context or certain you choose is relevant and important for that topic the methodological gap as just the name uh, sounds methodological you may have in view insight of what we the, this gap is all about it occurs when there is existing research on a topic but has not been explored or examined using a specific method or technique take for instance uh, qualitative quantitative either quantitative or qualitative method may have been used on a particular topic but no one has used something like mixed method in that direction so you may decide to view that uh, research from the two perspectives from the two lenses qualitative and quantitative in that ca case there is a methodological gap and that is what you want to cover to see the issue or the challenge or the problem from two perspectives if there is qualitative quantitative mixed method you may decide to use a systematic uh, literature review for that study so because no one has used systematic uh, literature review on that or meta-analysis on that particular topic you are having a methodological gap which you need to cover so i think you understand what i mean that within the existing research regarding uh, for instance uh, customer satisfaction there may be a lot of studies that use survey or interview to collect data but a few studies that use experimental observation is lacking in that case you go into that using these studies you have mentioned these are methods of a study that you have mentioned the pros is that it can reveal new insights since it's using different uh, another lens or another method so it can review new insights or perspective on a topic but uh, the drawback is that you we have to justify why that method or technique you choose is suitable and appropriate for that topic it is also very important for us to know that you can even use a uh, theories in this aspect you can use models or framework that people have studied this type of study or this type of work or even the title that people have studied it using different methods but no one has used uh, uh, this type of theory so the fifth one is time gap a time gap is a type of research gap that occurs when there is a lack of up-to-date or timely research on a topic or phenomenon i want you to remember that after five years it is expected that that work has gone obsolete has become old some even said 10 years but you know that if we if you go to our schools our universities you'll find out that you are expected to review your curriculum in five years every five years you review your curriculum that is a time research gap it happens when the existing literature is outdated obsolete or irrelevant due to changes in the context technology or even environment for example a time research gap can exist when the research on an impact of social media on meta health is based on data from 10 years ago let's say 20 uh, uh, 2010 which does not reflect the current trends and usage patterns of social media platforms these days why this uh, time gap offers researchers uh, opportunities to conduct new studies and address emerging issues it is very important you know that it 
<laughs> this type of research gap can be very difficult to find suitable literature to support their research objectives because it's a new one for you to get literature to support that such a study was conducted somewhere within that five years five years framework may be difficult for you the sixth one is the population gap a population research gap is a type of research gap that occurs when a population is not adequately represented or under researched in the existing literature or evidence based For instance, a population research gap can exist when the research on the effect of climate change on health is based on data from developed countries, which does not reflect the situation and the challenges of developing uh, con other developing countries. So in this case, the population you used may not represent the population upon which the findings is being generalized. You may also know that this population gap can exist uh, where you are using a sample. If you use a sample of a study that may not be a true representative of the population, one can still go into that particular title and conduct it using bigger population, larger population. I give you a, a, an example is when they conducted a study on the number of times a man will have sex to reduce uh, prostate cancer. The study came out that those who have it 21 times or more in a month has lower chances of prostate cancer. Then someone may come up and say, no, how much is your population? This person used, let's say, 82 men. 82 men is not enough for you to make such generalization upon the number of men that are in that country or in that region or in that uh, uh, place. Now, the person may decide to go into that study using a larger population. Let's say 120 or even 200 to have a better representative of the population upon which the study will be generalized. The advantage is that it can provide opportunities for researchers to conduct studies that address the needs, preferences, and the experiences of diverse and marginalized population. Maybe your study, the, the other study did not involve the, the disabled, like let's say in, in education. But it may be challenging, this type of study may be challenging for researchers to access and recruit participants from different populations, especially if they, if they face barriers such as language, culture, or geography. Having said so, from the start, I told you that research gap is an, is an aspect of a research uh, problem. That's another day we are going to have another video to distinguish between research gap and um, statement of the problem. But for now, know that there are four components of a statement of problem. The first one is the content, and the second one is the research gap. So there is no statement of problem that can stand without a research gap. Now let me give you an example of a uh, statement of problem with a research gap. This one highlighted in color is the research gap here, so that you can take cognizance of that while we read. Despite the potential benefit of precision agriculture in improving the productivity, profitability, and sustainability of agricultural production, there is an absence of empirical studies that investigated the strength weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, SWOT in abbreviation, associated with the adoption of precision farming technologies in Nigeria. 
In the meantime, limited scholarly works such as Adeyemo 2018, Babantude Etor 2018, Oheri Etor 2018, Omono no Na Etor 2018, Kwaye Etor 2019, Adesiji Etor 2020 exist on the potential challenges, prospects, and adoption of precision agriculture and smart agriculture in the Nigerian context. But none of the studies evaluated or described the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of precision agriculture in Nigeria. Besides, this prevailing literature on precision agriculture in Nigeria for the most part consists of descriptive or theoretical accounts that lack concrete evidence or scientific data pertaining to the actual or anticipated effects and threats of precision agriculture in the Nigerian agricultural domain. Consequently, it is imperative to conduct a comprehensive and systematic SWOT analysis of precision agriculture in Nigeria based on empirical data obtained from various stakeholders such as farmers, extension agents, researchers, policymakers, and private sector participants. Hence, the need for this study. You understand with me that when we say in the meantime, we say limited scholarly works such as this exist. They exist on the potential they exist on the challenges, they exist on the prospects, they exist on the adoption of PA and SMART, but not on the SWOT analysis. That is one. Not on the SWOT analysis. So in this case, the method they used is even different from what they find the findings. So we can say also the contextual here the information is the one to find out is new that no one has found it that is one two is that the method they used is not they may have used descriptive qualitative quantitative and rest of them but this case is using SWOT analysis which is another method and that is methodological gap when we said besides, the prevailing literature on precision agriculture in Nigeria for the most part consists of descriptive. We are talking that they, they, they used the methodological part. So we combine the two types of uh, 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 research gap here. We combine these two types of research gap here. Then, how to find potential research gap? One is start by reviewing recent journals, link articles in your area of interest, paying particular attention to the future research implication sections. In every in every article, in every article published, you look at the limitations of that study. So the section usually highlights the limitation of the study and suggests directions for further research. So you can use those suggestions as potential research gaps for your own study. The second one is use Google Scholar or another academic research engines to find the recent articles on your topic. Once you have found several articles, read through them and take note of any areas that are not fully addressed or where further research is needed. You can also use keywords such as gap, limitation, challenges, needs to filter such research results and formulate your title. The third is that you can consult your supervisor or other experts in your field. They may have some ideas or insights on whether or on what are the current or emerging research gap in your area of interest. 
you are your supervisor is supposed to be current. So he should know how to guide you. So he may point you to some relevant sources and references that you can use for your literature review to identify the research gap. Thank you very much and God bless you.